Welcome to Headline News 24/7. Please click like and subscribe. Well, 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 the Trump admin leaker has just been caught. Now he's going to pay. James Wolf is the former director of security for the Senate Select Intelligence Committee (SSIC). He was just indicted for lying about his contacts with the media, specifically a Lee Watkins of BuzzFeed and New York Times infamy. All told, Wolf allegedly had contact with four reporters around the time they wrote about former Trump campaign adviser Carter Page. Those reporters are possibly known as reporter number one Manu Raju at CNN, reporter number two Ali Watkins at the Need. Reporter number three Mariana Sotomayor at NBC and reporter number four Brian Ross at ABC. While the jury is still out on Page having contact with the Russians since they tried to flip him as a spy, President Trump had nothing to do with any of that. But these reporters sure tried to paint it as collusion. It wasn't. Wolf, who is 57, is now charged with lying to the FBI. That happened during an interview on December 15, 2017 when he was asked if he knew these journalists and if he had contact with them on certain dates. In the case of Ali Watkins, he denied knowing her and having a romantic relationship with her for four years. Later he would admit to that and thus the lying charge. He also gave information on Carter Page to Ali Watkins, who ran with it. Since then, the FBI has seized the cell phones and emails of the reporters under investigation. Wolf's indictment cites a particular message he wrote to Watkins in December. She used to work for the New York Times and now works for BuzzFeed, the media outlet that was the first to break the Russian dossier story. I always tried to give you as much information that I could and to do the right thing with it so you could get that scoop before anyone else, Wolf wrote to Watkins. They were an item from December 2013 to December 2017. What isn't clear is why Wolf focused on leaking about Carter Page. It is probably because he was the closest thing they had to a connection to Trump over Russia. It turned out it was a weak connection at best and did not lead to collusion with Russia at all. It was a political hit job against Trump. Wolf was arrested on Thursday. Carter Page did not publicly comment on all of this because he is currently traveling. However, he did blast all of this on Twitter, saying, too bad misleading, sick, leaks brought more terror threats. That doesn't clear Page by any means. But there has been no solid proof that he is connected to the Russians other than through investments either. From the Daily Caller, Wolf has worked for both Democrats and Republicans in his 29 year career. As the director of security for the committee, he was tasked with handling documents and contacting committee witnesses. That put him in frequent contact with Page, who was subpoenaed by the SIC panel in October. Wolf handled court documents that ended up being cited in an April 3, 2017 BuzzFeed article written by Watkins that identified Page as mail one in court filings in a Russian spy ring case, according to the indictment. The Senate panel received the documents from an executive branch agency on March 17, 2017, the indictment stated. That same day, Wolf exchanged 82 text messages with Watkins on the day the committee received the Page documents. The pair had 124 electronic communications the day the BuzzFeed article was published. The Department of Justice, DOJ, seized Watkins' email and phone records as part of an investigation into the Wolf leaks. She has not been accused of wrongdoing in the case and has denied receiving classified information from Wolf. I doubt that will last on Watkins' part. She will eventually be charged. Wolf got caught in the process crime of lying, so he went down first. But I don't believe for a second she didn't get any classified information from Wolf. That just stretches the imagination too far when he was sleeping with her and giving her tons of info. Watkins' article marked a crucial development in the coverage of Page, who surged to notoriety in January 2017 when BuzzFeed published the unverified Steele dossier. The 35 page document accuses Page of being the Trump campaign's conduit to the Kremlin. Page has vehemently denied the allegation and BuzzFeed has not produced any evidence supporting it. I may not trust Page, but there is no way Trump and his campaign had any connection to the Kremlin. That's why they can't prove it." Watkins' article was the one that outed Russian agents who were reaching out to Page in 2013 in the alleged recruitment attempt I mentioned previously. The FBI queried Page very closely on his ties with a Russian intelligence operative named Viktor Podobny. But they evidently didn't find much as they never charged Page. Podobny was charged alongside two other Russian nationals with acting as an unregistered foreign agent of Russia. Page met Podobny at an energy conference in January 2013 and later provided him with academic papers he wrote about the energy business. Page has denied any impropriety and was not accused of any wrongdoing, but his association with the case has fanned the narrative that he was in contact with Kremlin operatives. On October 24, 
Wolf messaged a reporter, who is identified as female, that Page would testify in a closed hearing this week. Page got wind of it and emailed the committee to complain about leaks from the sick panel. After the article about Page's subpoena was published, Wolf messaged the reporter who wrote that story, saying I'm glad you got the scoop. Thank you, the reporter wrote. Page, isn't pleased, but wouldn't deny that the subpoena was served. Wolf's indictment also hints that he doled out information to other reporters as I also stated previously. Wolf was asked whether he knew a reporter who wrote an article about Page during his December 15, 2017 FBI interview. Wolf initially denied having contact with the reporter, but the FBI discovered he talked to the journalist at least five times between December 2015 and June 2017. That's where perjury comes into play here. The article was written by three reporters and is not identified in the indictment. Watkins and the media are furious that her emails and cell phone have been seized by the DOJ and claim that it violates her First Amendment rights. Freedom of the press is a cornerstone of democracy, and communications between journalists and their sources demand protection, said the NEAT spokeswoman Eileen Murphy. Ben Smith, the editor at BuzzFeed, also defended Watkins' reporting on Carter Page's Mail One revelation. I am baffled that the FBI and Justice Department are going to these dangerous lengths over a story that points to public court documents that describe Russian spies approaching a Trump advisor, who himself is quoted confirming his role in the episode, Smith told the Daily Caller News Foundation. However, what they don't tell you is that Page was allegedly also working for the FBI to expose these Russian spies. Smith declined to comment on Watkins sourcing in the middle of an unjustifiable leak hunt. He did not address whether it was proper for Watkins to have a relationship with a Senate staffer on a committee she was covering as well. Watkins told BuzzFeed about her relationship with Wolf, according to The Need. This is a national security issue on multiple fronts and the Fed's seat that is superseding First Amendment rights in this case. That is something that the courts are going to have to decide and it may indeed go all the way to the Supreme Court. I have no doubt that the price Wolf will pay is a prison sentence over this. The FBI and the DOJ may make an example of Wolf but there are a lot more leakers out there to be caught. That was the news. We thought you might be interested in knowing about this. Please click like and subscribe. Thank you.